I will start with this very nice shot. I don't know exactly if this is a sunrise or a sunset. Tell me in the comments below what do you think it is, but it's absolutely amazing. Do you see this wave here? I'm gonna create a text and hide a part of it behind the wave and it's gonna be so cool. I will use a layer mask for that, so stay tuned if you want to see how it's done. First, I will create a text layer. I press T, click on the image, change the color from white to black, and then write in wave. You can write whatever you want, of course, it's up to you. Now I need to rotate the text to be in line with the wave. And if you need to scale your text up or down, you can hold down the shift key and you can scale proportionally. I don't need to scale it right now, I'm fine with this result. So after this, with the text still selected, I can use the arrows on the keyboard to move the text if I need to, and if I want bigger steps in movement, I just hold down shift and press on the arrow keys. These are just some quick tips which can help you a lot in Photoshop. Okay, the next step will be an important one. I will convert the text layer into a smart object because I will apply a smart filter on it and I need to do this right now, not later. This is the perfect moment to do this. So right click on the text layer and choose convert to smart object. Great. Now, in order to be able to put this text behind the wave, I will need to create a selection which will become a layer mask later. I'm gonna use the pen tool for this and I'm gonna create a path from the edge of the wave to the bottom of the image. I want to make this selection precise, so this is the reason why I'm choosing the pen tool. You can take your time with it. I will speed up the video until the path is ready. This pen tool procedure takes a lot of time sometimes, but it's one of the best tools if you want to create a very precise selection on your image in Photoshop. Okay, so my path is ready. As you can see, I covered everything from the edge of the wave to the bottom of the image. I can right click now and choose make selection. I will choose a feather of one pixel and click OK. Now keep in mind that I want to apply a layer mask on the text itself, so I will select my text layer. I'm gonna hold down Alt and then click here to create a layer mask. If you don't press Alt, and you simply create the layer mask, then you'll have to invert it with Ctrl plus I. If I take a closer look on the edge of the wave, I can see that some parts are sharp and some parts are softer because this photo was taken with a smaller aperture and the focus area is quite small. So I need to soften the layer mask where the wave is blurred. For this, I make sure the layer mask is selected. I hit B for the brush. I press D to reset the background and foreground colors here on the left side. Press X to invert them. And now I am sure that I will paint with black. I soften my brush just a bit, maybe change its size using the bracket keys. And then I start softening the mask here where I see that the edge of the wave is blurred. If I go too far with the black, I can press X and switch to white and I can brush over the areas that don't look so good. Again, I'm speeding up the video until I finish softening the layer mask where it's needed. Don't rush with this operation, it's important to be close to perfection, so again, I suggest that you take your time. The next thing I want to do is to change the color of the text in a dark gray and maybe something which has some red tone in it. So right click on the text layer, choose blending options, I will check the color overlay here click once on the color and then I can go outside this window, pick a color from a dark area somewhere around here and then darken it. I think that this change in terms of color gives more realism to the text so I don't have that boring black anymore. Okay, if I zoom in on the text, it looks too sharp for me so I'm gonna go to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur and choose a low value, something like 1.5 or 2 maybe Hit OK and it looks much better now. The text is not so sharp anymore comparing it to other things in my image. Now you understand why I converted the text layer into a smart object. It's because I can apply smart filters on it and modify them whenever I want. I just need to double click the effect and I can change my value here anytime. Let's move on to the next step. Because the sun is behind the text, I want to create a very soft shadow on the water. I will duplicate the text layer using Ctrl plus J and I'm gonna right click on the layer mask 
and choose Delete Layer Mask. Then I'm gonna hold down Shift plus Alt and drag this control point down to make this text in a mirror. This will be my shadow. I can hold down Control and adjust the text as I want. And trust me, this doesn't have to be perfect because it will be blurred and with a very low opacity. You will see. I hit enter because I'm done with the positioning. Now I will double click on the Gaussian blur effect which is already applied here and modify this value to 135. This is fine for me. The idea is to make the shadow very soft. I hit OK and then I can lower the opacity of the text layer to 40%. Okay, stay tuned because now I will show you how to create that glow effect for the sun behind the text. This will be so awesome. I'm going to create a gradient adjustment layer. I will put it on radial, click on the gradient and let's start adding some colors here. First make sure the opacity is zero on this slider. This is very important. Okay, so on the left side I click on the color and choose pure white. Then I'm going to add a point here and choose this nice yellow. It's FFEA00. I will add another point here and choose this color FF002A. Hit OK in the gradient editor and use your mouse to move the center of this gradient on top of the sun from your image. Then make the scale bigger. I will use 320 in my case. I will also check the Deter option, this will prevent any gradient bandings on the image. Hit OK then in the Gradient Fill and now I will put this layer on Screen Blending Mode. I will lower the opacity of the layer to 60%. You can just hit number 6 on the keyboard to do that and I will rename the layer to Glow. I can check the Before and After now and it makes a big difference. So this is how you can create a glow effect for the sun. I'm going to add a levels adjustment layer on top and bring the midpoint slider to the right side. This will darken the image and it looks fine to me now. I love it. But to make it even more realistic than this, I can also add some lens flare and I will show you some tricks. Check this out. Make sure your top layer is selected. Hold down Ctrl, Alt, Shift and E and Photoshop will create a stamp visible layer. This will merge all your layers and place them on a completely new layer for you. So now I go to Filter, Render and Lens Flare. I position my flare exactly on the sun. Choose this option called 105mm Prime. I will also raise the brightness value to 120% and then hit OK. Now the problem with this is that after you apply the lens flare you cannot make it bigger or move its position. But here is the cool trick. With the layer selected I go to Edit, Fill, choose Black and then hit OK. The layer is black now and if I go to Filter I can see here my recently applied effect which is the lens flare. If I press it Photoshop will apply the lens flare with my previous settings on the black layer. All I need to do now is to set the blending mode of this layer to screen and this will get rid of everything what's black on the layer. And here you go, you can now move the lens flare independently, resize it, apply a layer mask on it, anything. This is really, really awesome. I can convert this layer to a smart object and blur it then by going to Filter, Blur and Gaussian Blur and I will choose 40 for the radius because that looks fine to me. Press OK. I will apply a layer mask on this, choose a black brush and fade away this part of the lens flare because honestly I don't like it but this is just my preference, okay? So what do you think guys? How is the final image? Let me know in the comments and if you have any question about this tutorial feel free to ask me anything here or on my Twitter at iStalker. Smash that like button if you enjoyed this tutorial and don't forget to subscribe for photo, video tutorials and other cool stuff. This is Chris, catch you in the next one.